Today's story involves a recent murder case from Germany that concluded in February 2022. It involves a teenage girl who had one ambition, to become a serial killer. We're going to be looking at her problematic background, how she chose her victim, and what happened after she was caught. The video contains some graphic details that some people may find disturbing, so discretion is advised. And before we start, if you like tales from the dark side of life, then please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can be the first to be informed of any of our future videos. Okay, let's go. Today's story takes us to Germany, and due to their strict privacy laws, the perpetrator's name has never been fully disclosed by the courts. She's known simply as Sarah M. Sarah had dreams of becoming a successful serial killer, but was thankfully caught after she claimed her first victim. Let's take a deeper look into those events now. At the time of the murder, Sarah was an 18-year-old teenage girl living in Bavaria, Germany. From a young age, her behaviour was a cause for concern. She idolised the serial killers Ted Bundy and Richard Ramirez, and had posters of each covering her bedroom walls. Now this alone wouldn't be alarming, as there are many innocent people who have non-mainstream interests. However, Sarah also displayed worrying mental health behaviours. In the past, she had suffered with severe drug problems and exhibited disturbing practices. For example, she would sometimes draw swastika symbols on her hands. Her teenage years were plagued with frequent run-ins with police, which resulted in Sarah making regular court appearances. During one of these appearances, Sarah was given a community service sentence for abusing officers, calling them sons of bitches. Growing concerns for Sarah's mental health eventually resulted in her attending Bamberg Mental Hospital in March 2021. There, she was diagnosed with a border personality disorder and was found to harbour thoughts of self-harming. Despite this diagnosis, she was released from hospital the very next day. Only two months later, she would kill. Sometime in May 2021, Sarah decides to embark upon fulfilling a terrifying ambition. She wants to emulate her heroes and become a serial killer. To plan the attacks, she begins by conducting some disturbing online research. Search terms include the best places to strike someone on the neck, and how long it would take somebody to die from such a wound. A few days after these searches, Sarah decides to purchase the weapon. She visits a local hardware store and spends 12 euros on a camping knife. She takes the knife home and then plans the next stage of her attack. Five days after purchasing the knife, Sarah sets up fake dating profiles on three different platforms. She adopts the name Domina Cherry and begins to make contact with unsuspecting men. On one platform, she begins a conversation with 39-year-old Zayed E, an Iraqi security guard who has settled in Germany. Zayed has no idea how much danger he is in. So they begin communicating, and from an outsider's perspective, things seem to be going well. In fact, Zayed is so impressed that he agrees to meet with Sarah on the very first day that they make contact. He begins to make the journey to her home. And what does Sarah do? Well, Sarah leaves a voice message for a friend, and to quote, I'm going out now. I want to kill my first one. I'm excited. Wish me luck that it works. I'm super scared. Sarah also reveals how she intends to kill her victim. The plan is for Sarah to tell Zaid that she has a surprise for him, 
and that he should close his eyes. The message ends with her mimicking, stabbing sounds. Her friend dismisses these messages and doesn't take them seriously, and the police are not informed. Now is the time when Sarah and Zaid meet. At just after 8.16pm one evening in May 2021, Zaid picks Sarah up from a bus stop outside her apartment. Both of them are now in the car, and Zaid is concentrating on driving safely, seemingly unaware of the danger he's in. During the journey, Sarah makes a suggestion. They should spend the night together in a secluded cabin, which, of course, is conveniently located in a remote area where nobody will see them. Saeed agrees. He is directed to drive along a dirt road in order to head for this non-existent cabin, and it's at this time that Sarah makes the decision to attack. From the passenger seat, she suddenly lunges at Zaid's neck with the weapon and manages to make contact. Zaid grinds the vehicle to a halt. There is a struggle between the two of them, but Zaid does eventually manage to wrestle the knife from Sarah's hands. At this point, Sarah runs from the car and a severely wounded Saeed is left alone. He needs help quickly and manages to make his way to a nearby highway to seek that help. But it's too late. He quickly loses consciousness and falls into a coma. He will die three weeks later. 37 minutes after the attack, a bloodied Sarah is quickly apprehended by police. Initially, she is arrested for the attempted murder of Saeed, as he is still alive at this point. And when questioned, Sarah tells a police officer that she is sorry for what she's done, and that she expects to receive a long sentence for the attempted murder. During her apprehension, Sarah is also made to undergo a psychiatric evaluation. She is asked to complete a questionnaire and is seemingly remorseful over the attack. One of the questions asks her, What annoys you? To this she answers that I'm missing the best time of my life because I made a stupid mistake. Was this Sarah feeling remorseful? Possibly. However, there are some out there who interpret mistake differently. They believe that the mistake Sarah is referring to was actually about getting caught and not about committing the attack itself. What do you think? Either way, if it was a sign of any remorse, it doesn't last long, as we will see of Sarah's behaviour during her trial. During her trial, Sarah remained silent throughout, speaking only to confirm that the details in her arrest warrant were correct. Her defence lawyer wanted the fact that Sarah was a youth at the time of the crime, 18 years old, to be taken into account during sentencing, as in Germany, the maximum sentence that can be administered to youths is 10 years. Sarah's defence were pushing for a sentence of 8 years, The judge rejected these requests. Sarah was to be sentenced without a restriction on the term. Unlike in her psychiatric evaluation, Sarah never showed any remorse during her trial proceedings. Instead, she displayed defiance. When being sentenced, she raised her left hand to display a satanic pentagram symbol. This is in homage to one of her serial killer idols, Richard Ramirez. He would draw pentagrams on the bodies of his victims, and also raised his left hand during his trial to reveal a pentagram. At the conclusion of her trial, Sarah was handed a 12-year sentence to be served in a psychiatric facility. The judge closed with the words, It is extremely rare for a perpetrator to kill a person out of lust for murder. Sarah waived her right to read a final statement after her sentencing, and again chose to remain silent. 
But before leaving the courtroom, the chairman of the criminal court appealed to Sarah to use her incarceration as an opportunity to better herself, encouraging her to finish school and start some vocational training. It's unknown whether she's heeded this advice. To date, Sarah has still displayed no contrition for the murder. An investigation revealed that prior to meeting Zayed, Sarah had been in contact with 241 different men. And the prosecuting lawyer believed that if Sarah hadn't been caught, then she may have been able to fulfil her wish and gone on to become a serial killer. What do you think? Do you think she would have gone on to take any more lives? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. So what do we know of Sarah since she's been in the psychiatric hospital? Well, according to newspaper reports in Germany, she has been a model prisoner. She is respectful to guards, and she gets along well with other inmates. And what was Zayed? Well, his family managed to raise 5,000 euros in donations so that his body could be flown back to Iraq and given a proper burial. Sarah will be eligible for release in 2034. So that concludes the case of the wannabe German serial killer, Sarah M. What do you think of the 12-year sentence that she was given? Do you think that was justified because of her age? Or do you think she should have received a longer term? Please, let us know in the comments below. And if you liked the story from today's video, then please remember to like and subscribe to this channel so that you can be the first to be informed of any of the future videos that are posted. Until then.